plaintiff, Deborah Hill, says the defendant is her daughter, and she was a rebellious teen who often ran away from home. Deborah admits she was a strict mother because she didn't want the defendant to go down the wrong path. And she's suing her today for two car rentals and emotional distress. Defendant Brandy Hill says Deborah was a tough mom who screamed at her, called her names, and physically abused her. Brandy claims she left Deborah's home because she couldn't deal with the abuse anymore. And she insists she never agreed to repay her mother for the rental cars. All right, start with you. Well, I'm here because Brandy, um, when she was a rebellious teenager, and uh, she would run away from home as a child and go out and meet boys, smoke weed, drink. And um, I was a strict mother with my children and um, didn't want her to go down the same path that I did because I was kicked out as a uh, teenager when I was 15 years old. So I tried to um, give her good directions as far as uh, getting an education. When you say strict, give me a, uh, describe what that was. Well, basically making sure that she would, um, if I was at work, that she would be at home and uh, uh, get her schoolwork done and oh. those type of things that would, you know, occur. How about weekends? Uh, weekends, I would mostly have those kind of control, you know, if she went out with the friend to skating rings, I had to know where she was at all times. So were the curfews in high school? Curfews were, what, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Weekends? Weekends were about 12 o'clock. She had bars on the windows, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. how you kept her in? No. Yeah. And so basically, um, at 15, um, I end up letting her go stay with my sister, which is, a, which is an Letting educator, and, um, because she didn't want to listen. So that's you how. Yeah, trouble living with this sister as well? No, she, she strained out a lot. And when was the last time she was in trouble, your daughter? Did um, she change her life around at yes, some she point? Did, but she did become pregnant at 18. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of put her, put her off on her education. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've been trying to help her ever since, you know, as a teenager. Okay. You, know, you want to give me some background? Man. Yes. Uh, well, my mother was extremely abusive. She was emotionally abusive as well as physically abusive. And that was the reason why Starting I Starting at what age? I can't remember. That's how far back. As far back as you remember? Basically, yeah. Okay. In what ways? Um, just hitting, calling names, um, to the point of uh, chasing me down the street when she was angry in her car to get me back to the house to do something because she thought I didn't do it just way out of control, always screaming at us. Everybody knows her pretty much as being the crazy mom. Is that true? That you I don't believe that's true. I think, think that I, uh, you know, the rings that I put on them as a strict mother, they uh, wasn't down with it, so yeah, they the wanted to. The strictness is fine, but it's the way you uh, respond to uh, well, them uh, going beyond your rules. After telling them over 20 or 30 times, I would get angry. And I, I have, don't believe you know. telling them by 20 or 30 yeah. times, yeah. man. Exactly. I wouldn't even tell anybody. I would get angry after the third time. Yeah, exactly. So. That's a lot of patience. Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. All right, what else do you want me to know? Did you finish school, high school? I did. I actually left my house. She didn't send me to my aunt's house. I left because I couldn't deal with the abuse anymore. It was affecting everything that I was doing, my grades. So when I moved in with my aunt, I was able to graduate from high school with a 3.5 grade point average. I ended up getting back into actually having a life again. I had friends, I was able to do things, go places, have a good time. Because when I was living with her, I had run away several different times. Okay, start with you on the uh, car rentals and emotional distress. How does she owe you for that? Well, um, it started out, um, she had car problems with her first vehicle. She when? Got, uh, back in December of 2012. All right. And she got into a car accident, so she came to me and asked me if I could let her um, rent a car, and I did, because I don't feel like I should be a fit, you know, a taxi driver to the rest of the family, and if I didn't help her, then that's what it would have been ending up. Okay. You know, I have um, I have eight grandchildren, but six of them are hers, and I also take care of a 17-year-old that uh, Brandy has. She lives with, presides with me at this time. And so I end up giving her the loan, and she, I was. Why told, does a seventeen-year-old live with you? Well, they had personality differences Ooh. and stuff. Uh, my granddaughter. Her and a seventeen-year-old. Yes. Is yeah. that true? Yeah. Oh, so you crazy too, then? <laughs> <laughs> you 
different, you know, different than you and your mother. You and your okay. mother have personality <laughs> clashes and you move. You and your daughter have classes and she move. Yeah. Y'all, same thing. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so... Whatever you call her, that's what you are. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, she um, uh, ended up getting a loan and um, was going to pay me back around tax time. How much? Is, ah, uh, tax time. You knew better than that. Tax time. <laughs> um, the first loan was around $735. And I let her rent a car for about a month, you know, waiting for her to straighten out the car problems. And so, um, being those that she had uh, children to raise, I mm -hmm. gave her a little leeway. And um, the next loan, she got her, she had a second accident in, in a car that she bought from her tax money. And another accident came, so I ended up renting another when car. When was that? That was in May. Of 13. Yes. And that was how much did you loan her to was, get a car uh, that time? $884. Okay. And what emotional distress are you suing her for? Well, Your Honor, I cannot, uh, I just want her to grow up and take responsibility because I'm not rich and I feel like um, that um, all the loans that I have gave her, I didn't went out of my way to extend mm -hmm. myself and I can't afford to keep um, doing this for her because it's affecting me, it's affecting my sleep, it's affecting me emotionally to where I'm worried about my bills to get being paid. Well, there's one way to stop that. Don't do it anymore, right? Yes. yes. If you win the day, that'll be a good lesson not to do that anymore. Yes. Ma'am, what do you say to the car rentals she alleges you owe? Well, she did help me out when I got into the accident, and then my car was basically out of commission, and she recommended that I go to this guy that she was using to fix the car. He didn't really fix the car. So because he didn't fix the car, the car ended up blowing up, and I ended up needing another car because I'd just gotten a new job and I couldn't get back and forth to work. She, like she said, she wasn't willing to take me to and from work even though it was 10 minutes from her house and drop me off and pick me up or whatnot. So I had to have transportation because I didn't want to miss work. So she offered to take care of the car rental for me. Oh, she was willing to do that? Yeah. Because when you say that, you, you imply that she was uh, inconsiderate. She wouldn't take me 10 minutes around the corner to work. Yeah, that she not so inconsiderate not to put out 1500 or 1600 she was considered enough to do that. Yes, sir. So did you ever tell her you would pay her back? I wasn't able to I tell said, her I would pay her back. Did you ever tell her? No, because okay. I, I couldn't, because I was in between okay. jobs after that. In 2012, you never received income taxes. I did receive that income tax. Okay, so that would be the reason you would tell her yes, because you would be able to afford it based on your projection that you're going to get income tax back. So that is why you might have told her. Not because I couldn't tell her, because I would have no way. You would have a way. Your income tax would come. So that's why you would tell yeah, her that. Yeah, but it wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be, and I had bills I had to take care of as well. Oh, it wasn't as much as you thought it would be, yes. meaning you intended to at first, and you even told her that at first, exactly. but once you got it, and it wasn't in, as much as you thought it would be, it was then that you decided you wouldn't repay her. Boy, you just unslick all the way around. You had no slick in you. No, you shouldn't have went over your aunts. You should have went to the street and got you some <laughs> slickness. So when, so when you got sued, you know how to defend yourself without getting caught up in every other sentence. $1,619. I'm not granting you emotional distress, ma'am, because this is part of life, um, helping your kids and them not uh, keeping their word with you. Uh, so I'm going to grant you what she owes you, and I'm convinced she does, based on the testimony she's giving me. Um, $1,619, and your emotional distress is going to be dismissed. Have a good day. That's my decision. I still love my daughter. I just want her to be responsible and um, when we have hardships that we need to come together on it. But as far as giving her another loan or anything, I think I'll be listening to what the judge told me. I'm gonna still speak to my mother. I have to, my daughter's there. So yeah, I mean, she gets a little crazy when it comes to money though. Like I would have probably eventually paid her back, but you know, I'm just falling on hard times.